Yo, this is a 26 Tazavesh Streets Fortified Bursting Storming Shrouded. So, for this dungeon, I went ahead and took Versatility as my Shrouded uh, decision because it's a 26. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm going to be taking the damage, as they say. So, uh, first things first, this first pack is extremely deadly on Fortified, especially on a high key like this. So, uh, this middle guy in the that I've marked with Skull, he is the primary kill target, and anytime he does that explosion right there, uh, we just want to make sure, the Radiant Pulse actually that's about to come out, we just want to make sure that we've got a defensive up for it, and uh, I'm also going to throw out Chi Wave just to make sure that I help out uh, Andy, who is the healer in this key right now. You also notice that that's where I actually use my Touch of Death. These other two guys do do quite a bit of damage to me, but they don't do to, to the rest of the group, so uh, I generally use my Touch of Death to take out the middle guy there, ASAP. So with this next pool, we got the Shrouded, and then we got the two casters. On the one that's marked with Star, the security officer, we want to make sure that we have our group interrupting the barrier on that. Um, if the barrier is missed, you can uh, dispel it with a uh, purge from either a Priest, Hunter, Warlock, Shaman, all that jazz. Uh, and then on Purple, we want to make sure that's the interrogation specialist. Uh, we want to make sure that we're interrupting the stasis beam. Both of those are uh, abilities that can be interrupted with any type of CC. It doesn't just need to be an interrupt. They won't recast it. Um, so we can just kind of take care of that. Generally, when I'm tanking this, I'll assign um, whoever the DPS is in the group that's a melee to get star, and I'll take care of purple. Uh, if I'm doing it with like my regular group, uh, they already know their assignments, so uh, generally I, I'm going to be the kick on purple anyways, so just kind of get used to it do, doing it that way. As soon as this group is down, um, I'm going to go ahead and grab the next two packs. Now, this used to have three casters in it, but because of the Shrouded FX, one of the casters um, gets turned into one of the Shrouded FXs, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, so I pull this in. You do want to wait till that other pack gets close enough. If it's too close to the other one when you pull it in, um, it will pull the other group with it, which is scary. Now, the hunter thought that I didn't mean to pull that, so he kind of panicked and used Bloodlust. Uh, that's definitely not needed here. Uh, so, uh, no. Don't worry about lusting on this pack. Same thing here. Take care of interrupting Star and Diamond. Again, we're looking to interrupt Barriers. Um, and stasis beams, and then uh, the added thing that you want to watch out for is the rotating Mario beam of death. Um, so generally, I just try to pull the adds away. I might use Clash or Ring of Peace to move the casters, um, or just an interrupt um, to get them away from that. Uh, but as soon as the casters are dead, you're good to pull just into the next group. I'm especially doing that here because, uh, you know, Lust is rolling for some reason. Uh, same thing here again, same two mobs to interrupt. Again, Barrier and Stasis Beam. Uh, you can see me get a little low here. I realized that uh, something went terribly wrong, which is why every screen popped up in the world right there. Uh, apparently, I was holding down control when I tried to hit my Aegis Trinket, and uh, nothing happened. So I, I panicked a little bit there, and somehow Cheat Torpedo would open up a few windows. Uh, but yeah, so don't do that. Not good. <laughs> Alright, uh, from here on out, normally when it's a Fortify week, I would go over to the other set of casters and then to the Shrouded mini-boss. Um, and then I'd Lust on the Shrouded mini-boss. But, uh, our Hunter Lusted, so I'm kind of like playing by ear here. I'm setting up my Transcendence because I'm going to pull the boss's mini-boss, this guy right here. Now the reason it's important to set up Transcendence is for this Radiant Pulse. I don't get it here because I am pulling things into... Uh, the correct spot, but you can see how much damage the Hunter and Rogue took when they didn't LOS that. They got absolutely nuked and almost died. On here, the only thing that's super important to interrupt is the Glyph. The Glyph puts a slow debuff on all targets, um, so I generally just save my interrupt for that, and then just kind of bounce back and forth between the Wind Beams. Besides that, he'll do the Rift Blast, it doesn't matter, but the reason I set up Transcendence is for the next time the Rift Blast comes out, or not sorry, Rift Blast, but the Radiant Pulse comes out, I'm going to Transcendence and LOS, because he won't move while he's casting that. So, Radiant Pulse, you can see it went off, Transcendence, and then as soon as it's over, I just get back into position. Alternatively, uh, you can use things if you're a monk like Celestial Brew. Um, generally, that will block 
the entire cast of Radiant Pulse for us, but you know, if we've got the Transcendence set up, why not use it? Just save Cell Brew for when we need it later. Uh, now, it's at this time that I'm like, do I want to do boss? Do I want to do the mini boss? Uh, Lust has already been used, so uh, I don't really know what to do here, but someone says, let's do the ads, so I'm like, okay, sure, let's go do the ads. Ideally, do not pull the mini boss with these ads. Uh, my warlock apparently didn't give a fuck about me during this key, and uh, you're lucky Car the regular comms on here aren't on here because uh, me and Andy were just like, what? is this warlock doing the entire time okay i was not prepared for this i did not have cds for it and he was not prepared for it uh by no means was i going to do this pull together i was going to do the casters and then take care of the mini boss and the spinny wheel dude later right after it uh that didn't happen so you can see here andy actually ends up going down he uh not only seeds but gets killed through the seed uh everyone else is super unhealthy now the reason why this is such a deadly pull for tanks is because the non-casters in here, they buff themselves. Uh, you can see like a buff will keep on going up on them. That makes all of their abilities do magic damage. Now, uh, as a monk, we're really good about uh, physical damage because our stagger takes care of any of that. But it's reduced effectiveness. It's like 35% effective against magic attack. So instead of negating 52% uh, of the damage coming in, uh, and you can see Andy did die just there. I was a little early on when he died. But uh, instead of reducing the full 52% that I am right now with, like, regular attacks, um, you know, it's only 32% of that. So it's, like, what, 20-something, 30-something. Um, enough that it I'm getting hit by that, blasted by that. Plus, I'm getting blasted by this guy. He puts this dot on here that stacks up to six times. Ideally... Uh, you want your healer to dispel that at like 3, and uh, you might even, if you go higher than 3, you're probably going to need some type of defensive. And then you've got this ability, which on a 26 just fucking smacks, right? Uh, so just, you know, be prepared. I was super not happy about Jack here, um, our pug warlock, but he apparently just wanted to pull fast and big. But that meant we had to do another pack later, but we'll get to that. So luckily all that we lost here was Andy. Uh, and a little bit of my sanity as uh, we do this boss. So, again, just make sure when you're doing this mini boss that um, if you have any, like, offensive cooldowns to help with the shield, definitely use them. Anytime the bat comes out, just be ready to paralyze it or stun it with leg sweep uh, so that it doesn't cast. Uh, using ring of peace doesn't work on the bat. Um, any knockbacks and ring of peace type things, clash, they don't stop the cast on the bat. So it bat so it does need to be a hard cc such as paralyze or you know like sweep but now that this boss is dead the mini boss that is we can go ahead and move on to the regular boss which ideally we would have done that mini boss with lust because it's fortified and uh, we don't need it for the bosses but uh it is what it is so this just standard thing just tank them um i would have actually been doing this boss with the four <laughs> ads that i ended up pulling uh, if it was like a tyrannical key, um, generally I do that after the second in prison because you're pretty much safe to just kind of take care of it there. But here, just kind of standard, you know, try not to be against the shield, move out of the swords, um, and, you know, just help out with the imprisons that go out. So uh, I'll let this play through and... Uh Another thing to be careful of is when the containment cells come out. Um, make sure you're not between whoever it picked and the boss, otherwise you will get immediately destroyed, even as a tank. Um, and even if the person is going to be like immuning it, still just make sure you're on the other side. But you'll notice, generally if I know that they can't immune, I'll actually run out and start attacking them like I just did there, uh, just to help out. A lot of times, if you have touch of death, that's a good spot to just touch of death, get that phase over, and just get right back to attacking the boss.
Now, it's at this point that I was actually starting to think, we've got that one ad over there that I was going to pull with the miniboss that's just left over there. Uh, I communicate with Andy to see if that's something we wanted to pull here. I kind of wanted to pull it, uh, but it was a 26, fortify. That guy does hit a lot. We've got the spinning axes. we got storming and throwing in the Mario spinner. Uh, definitely not ideal, so um, we decided against it. And I do use my Touch of Death here instead of freeing the Warlock, because why free the Warlock with Touch of Death when I could just Touch it at the boss? Uh, so here, I generally, unlike most Blood DKs, a lot of Blood DKs, when they're coming out of here, they'll go to the right and go straight towards the trading sequence. Um, but that's because they do, like, you know, crazy amount of damage and self-healing. Uh, and also, they hate their healers, okay? If you go to the right and go the other way through all that trash, it's, like, the most healing intensive part of this entire key. It can be 100% avoided by going left. The ads over here are worth more than the ads going down towards trade. It's three pools, uh, and they're like significantly easier to deal with. So, uh, if you hate your healer, go down the stairs to the right here. If you love your healer and want them to like you, go to the left, because it's a lot easier to deal with and gives you the same amount of trash. And uh, actually takes, generally takes a little bit less time, especially as a monk. Thing to watch out for here, obviously, is just the spinning Mario beams. Hopefully your healer will dispel you when you get caged, because uh, it does root you. Obviously, you don't want to be rooted in the beam. Um, but, you know, just kind of keep on moving away. If you see uh, one of your ranged are being a little, like, headstrong and about to get hit by the beam, you can move the boss a little bit, or this mini boss a little bit, to pull them up away from the beam. One of the things most people don't know is that if the beam is coming at you and you have, like, nowhere to go, you can just jump over it. 100%, like, no joke, like, it's just there. You can just jump over it, and it won't hit you. Good thing to know. First time someone told me that, I was like, you're trolling me. You just want me to take sex. But, and then they did, and I was like, oh, shit, you can just jump over that. So, if you didn't know that, now you know. All right, so on this next pull, I generally don't pull the Shrouded here, because it's not really needed. I'm going to pull these two Core Hounds. And the dinosaur. With the core hounds, you want to assign someone to interrupt the ancient dread on star. I take the ancient dread on purple. And then this little beam where Andy's standing, that's where you want to stand if you're arranged so that the dinosaur can't charge you. Now, unfortunately, my warlock once again wants to pull for me. And I freak out and go grab that and hit all the ranged with the breath. And it's at this point that I'm like, seriously, can you please stop pulling? If you want to pull, be a tank. If you don't like the rod I'm doing, say something but like say you're going to pull something don't just fucking pull bro uh so i was getting a little upset because i was like uh this is just on andy he's being destroyed i need to move and then of course i frontal everyone and this warlock decides that he's not happy with the fact that i'm not pulling every shrouded ad in the dungeon i don't know if you know this but you don't actually need them all um yeah the the percent's nice but like if it's going to make a pull a little bit harder, which in this case, we want the healer and the range to be stacked on that pillar to avoid the dinosaur. Uh, which you want to do the dinosaur with this pack because the dinosaur with the cats, actually, the cats really hit really hard the next pull after this. Um, so the dinosaur just makes that worse because the range don't have a spot that they can just stand to avoid being charged. Uh, so, yeah. It was kind of like a whole, a whole thing. And this warlock is just like standing at the front of the dungeon and i'm like is he about to leave i thought the res went off i pulled and eh, not the best decision here I'm not gonna lie pretty frustrated especially because this is generally an easier key to time and then and then we get the ancient dread going off the ancient dread going off is like the last thing you want to happen you can see the debuff there on my screen really large um but basically this ancient dread puts a 50 percent slow on your cast speed plus on your abilities so it doubles the recharge time of all of your abilities. It can be decursed, but if you take a look at our group, we don't have a decurse. So that's not good. The other thing to know about this pool that I didn't go over as we wiped earlier is that these core hounds need to die within like 10 seconds of each other. It's actually, I think like six or eight seconds, but generally you want them to die evenly, okay? Um, so this is a good spot to save touch of death as a tank because if one is getting killed a lot faster than the other, you can see here star is like 20% ahead. Uh, I went ahead and moved Diamond over to Skull so the people know to kill it. They don't really care, but I'm going to use Touch of Death to just make sure it dies quick enough so that we can deal with it. Again, uh, as a tank, interrupt the Ancient Dread here. When the Lava Breath comes out, it does hit pretty hard. 
on Brewmasters, especially because it's a spell damage. So that's where I save things like Cell Brew, I'll use my Aegis Trinket, uh, even Fort Brew if I need it. And then this pack's generally not too bad. I do grab the Infiltrator that's there because it's right there. It's going to die at the same time as everything else. I generally don't pull the other Infiltrator just because it gives double sleep clouds and makes it a little bit more hectic. Not really needed. Uh, but you can see here the Dinosaur is going to make things a little bit more awkward because uh, the spot where the Hunter is standing there at the top of my screen doesn't stop the, the Dinosaur from charging. Uh, the only way to stop it is to like LOS while it's coming out. So again, that's why I like to deal with the dinosaur at the top of the stairs, because all the range can just stand on the thing. It tries to target them and then just fails and it just stands there. Uh, and it doesn't ever pick melee. So, uh, But these cats do kind of shred, so uh, any cooldowns you are able to save from the pack before, you generally do want to save here. Um, I'll even use things like Leg Sweep to get just like a three seconds of like safety for me to get some health up. Uh, also Ring of Peace, you can see me put that down right here just to keep the cats from getting on me and jumping even more. And again, generally this dinosaur dies at the same time as the Core Hounds, which is why it's really good to pull those together. It lives longer than the cats, which just slows everything down even more. So. Uh, ideally, if you can grab the dinosaur before it walks down the stairs, definitely grab that dino. So, as soon as this pack is dead, I'm going to start moving towards Menagerie. Now, there's a shrouded guy in the Menagerie entrance, and then there's a shrouded guy with the two-pack up here going towards the mini-boss. I generally start by grabbing the two-pack, uh, grab the shrouded guy and this other dude, and then I'll pull him into the hallway for a Menagerie. You can see that Andy actually went off screen and has activated Menagerie and I'm just going to pull this into there. Now, uh, generally this trash, if it's tyrannical, it'll die before the boss activates and then you can just go straight into the boss. With Fortified, it does live a little bit longer, especially because this guy's not coming in and the range aren't stacking together um, with the melee. So it's just making this list last a little bit longer than ideal. So uh, unfortunately, it is going to like reset the boss and give us an extra 25 seconds that we need to wait. Uh, but generally what you want to do is make sure that all your ranged and everyone is grouped up for that guy. He just charged out there to range. If everyone is within, uh, I think it's five yards of each other, that guy doesn't jump out. He just doesn't do that ability. And then the only thing you have to worry about is stopping his shield, which you can use Paralyze, Leg Sweep. You can even use Clash or Ring. Um, any regular CC will work on that, anything but an Interrupt. Um, so just take care of these all together. Gives you a nice percent, gives you the nice shrouded percent buff for everything for our cases we're getting versatility here uh, and then from there we'll just go straight into the boss now on a 26 fortify there's not really anything too dangerous about this boss. The most dangerous thing about this boss is that sometimes the first boss bugs out and doesn't give your group the debuff that allows you to eat all the balls. Uh, if that happens, it really sucks because balls go everywhere, you've got no way to stop them, and they do quite a bit of damage from soaking them. So uh, that's really the only thing to look out for. Besides that, generally start the boss, have people use cooldowns if they want, um, but generally I'll tell my lust person that if lust is coming up that we're going to save it for the second guy in here that's the robot and specifically when the robot hits 30 percent so each of these bosses when they hit 30 percent it might even be 40 percent it starts the like rp for the next boss in the sequence so about 30 percent that gives you lust to finish up the second guy before the third guy comes out because the third guy and the second guy are not really great to have out together this first guy doesn't do anything important, so it doesn't matter. You're just moving out of circles. Um, so it doesn't matter if this guy is up when the other one's up. Plus, generally, because people used cooldowns in the beginning, it dies before he jumps down, which you can see he jumps down. Now with this one, uh, the important thing to know is just that you want to kind of tank him so that when he does the vented ability where he's shooting out all the balls, that he's by this door. What it does is it just kind of like puts all the balls going in one direction. It makes it easier for whoever has the debuff, which I currently have it, but it's about to go on uh, my rogue here. Uh, it just makes it easier for them to pick up balls. 
If you don't know, with that debuff, it doesn't just transfer randomly. When the timer expires on the debuff, it goes to whoever's closest to you. So if it goes on you as a tank, just make sure you put it back near uh, a melee. And if you have two melee in your group, generally as the timer is about to expire, which you can see my weak aura is tracking it on the rogue right now, so I can see when it's about to expire. When it's about to expire, just know that move away from the two melee, that way they can keep on bouncing the debuff back and forth together. Um, that way they can continue to get buffed from these balls, um, because, you know, as a tank, it's, you know, going to increase our damage, but it's not going to increase our damage nearly as much as it will for a melee DPS, or a ranged DPS. So, now, the trick here is as this guy's dying, the other guy's about to spawn. Uh, generally, I'll use Touch of Death there, I did right there. You want him to be dead in the same spot that the venting, you want it to go off. The reason for this is because while he's dead, he'll just spawn the balls. If he's in the middle of the room, balls go everywhere and it's not really good. If he dies in the doorway, then you can tank this third boss kind of close to the doorway and just kind of let your melee pick up the buffs. Uh, the only time I pull the boss away from the dead second dude um, is when he does that whirling where he sucks everyone in um, and that's just so that people can collect balls without having to worry about being sucked in and getting killed. And then the other thing to keep in mind is when chains go out, if it goes onto a range, pull the boss over to whoever's changed just so it can be cleaved down. You'll also notice that while I'm doing this, um, if people are chained and I have the debuff, I'll kind of just block the balls from hitting them. Um, and if they're chained and I don't have the debuff and the guy with the debuff is far away collecting balls, then I will just eat a ball. Just know that it does still chunk you when you eat the balls if you don't have this uh, the debuff on you. So just be careful about eating too many balls in a row. It will kill you and you just don't want to die that way because it is, once again, magic damage. So up next, we're just going to avoid the pat that sometimes walks over here. If the pat's close, you can just go one fence over. Uh, and we're going to pull this guy and just tank him against this little outlet here. Uh, be aware that with Storming Week, uh, <laughs> you can get comboed here in a really interesting, fun way that can wipe your group really easily. Because it's Storming Week, you can get knocked up in the air. And if he is casting the kick, which like knocks you as far back as you can go, basically. Uh, so if you get Storming and you get knocked up and kick is going out, you will fly over this cogwheel thing that we're using to brace us. And uh, you'll probably pull something. So... Just be careful, uh, I put down Transcendence just in case I do get knocked up as it kicks going, that way I can just Transcend back real quick. Uh, generally it doesn't happen, but you know if it does, just be careful. Uh, and then otherwise, stay against this corner. <laughs> I let my group know that we're going to go to Mail next, we're going to chart with just one pull in there while someone activates the trade sequence. Um, they're just activating the dialogue there so that we can go do the trade sequence. Uh, because it's not season three anymore before i used to use woe to have someone go activate that while we activate menagerie um and then we would have someone else with a different woe go do the whole trade sequence because it's not season three anymore instead we just do it this way you do want to make sure that that guy gets either sapped or imprisoned by a demon hunter so you can walk past it if not you can paralyze it and knock it away with ring but just know if you get too close with anything besides sap or the demon hunter in prison it will pull so if you don't have a sap or a demon hunter to imprison and you are worried that someone's going to pull it, just pull it with that mini bus. But moving on to the next pool, while trade's being activated, I just pull the right side of the mail room and just pull it out. Uh, the reason we're going to go do trade sequence next is because we just used Lost on Menagerie. So we're going to go ahead, take care of trade, do the trade boss, and then we'll come back and take care of the mail room boss with Lust. Uh, the mail room boss you want lust for more than you want the last boss. The last boss actually doesn't care. Like, it doesn't matter here. A lot of people are like, oh no, we need lust for the last boss. You don't. You want lust for the mailroom boss. If you can have it where you do first, mailroom, and last boss, awesome. If not, you're better off doing it this way because the second boss lasts way longer and is deadlier than the last bosses. So ideally here, uh, what we do is we have normally Andy, if he's my healer, which he's normally my hero, healer, he'll get on his uh, two-seater mount and then someone can pick up the, the item and just get on the back and as long as they weren't in combat before, they can just sit on the back and do the whole trade sequence. Now unfortunately, they all just ran away, so I had to pick up the item uh, and take it to start doing it. 
So, it's really unfortunate. You can see this weak aura I have, though. Uh, I put the top left hand on the screen there. Shows you what item you have and where you need to go. And then, with that weak aura, also, when you pull up your map, it'll show you where you, like, where each of the icons goes on the map. So it makes it a little nice. Uh, luckily, finally, the warlock decided that he was going to pick up the items so that I can just tank these. Uh, the small mobs aren't super important. They'll just follow you. But the one that has this line connected to it will always go towards whoever has the item. But you want to be careful because as soon as the item is dropped, he'll, he'll target whoever has highest threat. So definitely hit them. If you can just hit them and then CC them with uh, Paralyze, I like to also use like Ring of Peace or Lake Sweep. Uh, you can do that. You can see my Warlock again decided to pull another Shrouded that we didn't need and it's just extending this fight and making it a little bit more difficult. Uh, some people like to pull them. If it's a lower key, I do. But uh, here it's it's not really needed. But they finished up. We got our third guy. So you just want to pull everything else and then pull it up onto these stairs. If you stay down the stairs, you have a chance of more of the small adds respawning. Like you can see that pack coming in right there on the right side um, and just being pulled. So just come up on the stairs, take care of that. Uh, you can have someone open up the door using the secret code. Um, and then you want to make sure all the guys from the event are dead. So those are the small guys and the guys who fixated. The shrouded FX guys, you can pull down. But anything else, if you go down the stairs with those ads, it will bug out the boss and it'll either reset it or you won't be able to click on icons and, and it's just bad. And, and then you can't kill the ads. So... As long as all those are done and you've got just the Shrouded guys left, you're good to go down and take care of stuff. You will notice that I set my Transcendence up there. That's just so that I can do a quick er, exit. Uh, I put it outside the door when I have a Warlock. That way, as I'm leaving, I can Gateway. And then as soon as I Gateway to the top, I can Transcendence out the door and it'll immediately be mount mounted and move. Uh, if I don't have the Warlock, then I'll put it at the very top where I jump down from. That way I don't have to run all the way around. And then you just run out the door. Now, for whatever reason, uh, this instrument bugged on me. You can tell there's there's no icons on the ground. Uh, I've had this bug happen twice this week, uh, so I'm not sure if it's something wrong with the horn that I have um, that the blizzard might have broke. Uh, but generally, uh, the item up front here that we have here is one that you just, you know, you move to the three circles, click it, and you get knocked up in the air. Now, what's important for this group is to know that the two unmarked mobs will throw food and the throw food actually hurts. So uh, when they're throwing food, if it a lot of times the very first one, they'll throw it at the same person and they can die. So just be ready to ring a piece them or stun them in some way uh, so that both don't go on the same person. Now with the security officer, the one marked with star, you want to interrupt him plus you want to point him away from people because he does like a slam and it is kind of a small frontal that will hit people around you. So just be careful with storming that that's not hitting people. The guy marked with moon will just cast over and over again, but they'll also do a teleport, which is a hard cast. The teleport, he'll like go to the far side of the room. You can completely avoid that by lake sweeping, ring a piece, paralyze. It just stops the cast and then he doesn't cast it again for like another 20 seconds or so. Alternatively, if the cast gets off, you can clash the target to pull him back in um, and just kind of deal with them that way. But you can see I generally run over to get threat. Unfortunately, uh, both the throw foods targeted someone, and you can see the hunter instantly died. That was the two unmarked ads here, throwing food. So just be careful. Uh, let your let your DPS know they, they might die there. <laughs> um, but again, I'm just being ready to interrupt star. The cast or moon don't really matter. Again, the only thing on moon that I'm worried about is interrupting the teleport, which is a hard cast, which you do need to use a hard CC on. And then again, just pointing star away. So you can see Destructive Patron right there was casting Teleport. I went ahead and CC'd it with Paralyze, and then he stays right there. Now, the other thing to know about this event while you're setting up is that um, you don't actually have to do all four of the things you get like a 26 second buff just for doing one and then it refreshes each time that you do another so if you do like the first three and then set up to grab the last set of ads you can ignore the fourth one um, it doesn't actually matter unfortunately again i'm not being buffed at all here because this for some reason is bugged i'm going to where i know that the icons normally go and using the thing there and it still wasn't giving me the buff so kind of unfortunate but apparently this is bugged currently so with this guy, 
Big thing again, point him away. He's just kind of like a bigger version of the guy that was marked with star before. Interrupt him when he casts. Uh, when this thing's happening, generally you can just stay in and use your instrument at the last second. You'll get a buff and he won't actually hit you. Um, move out of the green circles and obviously don't be in his frontal when he's about to knock things away. Uh, don't really have any other chips, tips or tricks for this one other than uh, make sure that you interrupt him at the last second instead of at the beginning because then you get free time where he's not doing anything. Alright, so as soon as he's dead, you'll notice I'll cheat torpedo, take the gateway, and then move a little bit, teleport, and then I can mount up. So, really nice. Again, if you don't have the gateway there, you can instead put your teleport at the top, and then teleport. You do want it to be closer to the, where you jump off, though, otherwise you won't be able to teleport to it. From there, we can go ahead and just start pulling these groups. Ideally, uh, if this is a tyrannical week, you will want to get the first male elemental, the guy marked with star right there, um, and get him low, and then have your warlock banish him. If you don't have a warlock, you can like ring him away and then paralyze it, have a hunter trap, all that stuff works. Banish is best just because it doesn't take damage and it won't break. Um, but here I'm just pulling everything together. The thing to be careful of is the guys who go to open up the traps. If they do that, you can stop them with leg sweep, you can stop them with clash, paralyze, ring a piece, all that, anything like that stops them. Um, you definitely don't want those being open because then you'll get stunned or have an extra ad to deal with. Now, our uh, Warlock here decides not to banish Star uh, when we kill it, when it's getting close to dead, or purple either. Um, so we'll just go off, just make sure you pull the adds out of the bubble because they do benefit from the haste. Boss, just so you know, doesn't benefit from it. So you can see I kind of pulled him out and then I get myself inside. But of course there's a sleep cloud there. Dun, dun, dun. So, careful of the sleep clouds. But as soon as the male mental is about to be dying, you can pull the boss, lust, and then just make sure that the range stand in that bubble that spawns from the male mental. On this boss, big things, just make sure you soak as many circles as you can. Try not to like pull the boss super far away, especially if people are using the circle there. I end up doing it just because these were in the very, very middle. Um, and then during the this right here, the fan mail, um, this is probably the best part to use a defensive, such as like Cell Brew or the Aegis Trinket. Um, other than that, make sure you group up when you need to group up. Hunter turtles that, so that's nice. Uh, good thing to know, things that can take care of that throw coins is Hunter Turtle. Uh, your rogue can cloak it. If they've already cloaked, they can still run out and solo it by using evasion. And then mages can ice block it. Now, with these uh, throwing of the mail bombs... Uh, Chi Torpedo is really nice. So you're slowed when you have this. You can Chi Torpedo over. You'll notice I also set its Transcendence up so I could just Transcendence right there. Uh, especially if it's a long way. That way you can just take care of them even faster. Again, you can see this right here is really the only thing that's doing a whole lot of damage along with this. I will help top people off here on Tyrannical especially. Uh, just vivify. It's okay for you to vivify while tanking, especially right there where you're not taking any damage. Just vivify, help top up the group, cost 25 energy, and generally it's going to heal for 10 to 20k, which is pretty huge. Uh, and then after the, the coins go off, I, I threw out a chi wave just to kind of help top people up real quick. Doesn't do a whole lot, but it's enough to help out the healer a little bit. Now, once he gets to 20%, you can see I marked him with Skull. That's me telling the group, ignore the rest of the mechanics and just kill the boss. The only thing you really have to deal with here is if Throw Coins goes on someone who can't immune it, and then at that point, just jump into the immune. You can still grab some circles if there's any near that uh, are in the room that you're going to be dealing with, but for the rest of the fight, you're pretty much good to just tank and spank, as they say. Now again, be careful when you're coming out of here because you've got that one guy who's blocking uh, the way. If you didn't kill him, you're going to need your rogue or demon hunter to sap or imprison. And if you didn't do that, then you will need to get out first, paralyze it without getting too close, and then knock it away with rings so that you guys can get past. We had sap here, so we took care. 
And then the thing to note here is that uh, you do need to go up to this point right here uh, to activate the boss RP. Uh, and it does take 25 seconds. So if you had deaths along the way, you are free to eat here. I don't know why I didn't, but you can eat here. Um, and then I generally put a transcendence down somewhere so that I have a quick way to get through and remind the healer to just soul stone, uh, to get soul stone by the warlock, uh, just as a last ditch in case. You can see here we've only got three minutes left. Still more than enough time to time this, especially because it's fortified, not tyrannical. Um, but, you know, you just want to think about what could go wrong and make sure that you're good to go. So always look for where the Shuri is coming from and then start moving towards it and go through as soon as possible. That way the DPS know to follow you, especially as a tank. Um, and then when Quick Blades is coming out, that's a good time to use a defensive. There's generally not anything else on here that is going to hurt you unless you somehow get hit by the rings from Shuri. So just be careful about that. When the double kick comes here, let one of your pugs get the first kick. If they don't kick it, then... Someone will kick it, okay? Uh, generally, as the tank, get the second one, kick it right before it's about to go off at the last second, but let someone else get the first one. Um, generally, it's safer that way. Otherwise, if you kick, then someone else probably kicks at the same time, and then it ends, and then you're back doing mechanics again. Now, something to be careful of is, for whatever reason, in the last two weeks, this boss has been kind of weird. Um, he's casting Shuri a lot, or, like, not at all. I've had like three different keys where he casted four back-to-back -back Shuri's. I don't know if a hotfix broke that. And then I also had a key like in the middle there where he didn't cast at all the entire fight. So just be ready for him to do a lot of Shuri's. Um, generally, when it comes to if you do have Lust coming back up or if you have cooldowns, you want to wait until after 40%. That's when he puts up the second wall. Uh, that's generally where your damage is going to be most efficient because you want to kind of kill him before you have to deal with a bunch of these Shuri's going off. Here, you can see Shuri's in a bad spot. I'm moving quick because I don't have my Transcendence set in the spot that it's at. And I'm just getting through here. If everyone else dies, there's still enough time for you to solo this boss. You can solo this boss even on a 26. Uh, just by using Expel Harm, you can vivify yourself a couple and you know have your CDs ready, but generally, you're safe. You can see right here, we got 7%, and we're looking good, so I'm just going to leave them here. I'm not even going to worry about it, I'm going to get the Touch of Death off before the ring comes to us. So, uh, that's it for this key. If you have any questions about it or any comments that you want to make, make sure to hit me up in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. See you guys.